Hi, this is Danielle Zana. Basically, I sent a, uh, a letter off um, to the MP um, regards to the fracking um, near Sunderland, and um, and um, I got actually a response. Uh, it says, uh, "Dear Ms. Lam, thank you for your email regarding shell gas extraction." which I read with interest. I believe, she, she says, I believe shell gas extraction could only go ahead if it is robustly regulated and comprehensively monitored. Furthermore, any extraction must be done in such a way as to help decarbonize our electricity by 2030. Unfortunately, I'm sorry, um, this change, this has to be stopped immediately. Um, because you, the thing is, it's been done elsewhere on the planet, and um, there's been many problems of um, poisoning of the water, um, as well as uh, uh, numerous pro problems because they um, pump chemicals to extract the gas, and, 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 it, and it poisons the water supply. And this is absolutely no no. And secondly, um, the decarbonisation of electricity supply by 2030, there is not enough time till then. You've only got like till about 20, uh, another 26 years, um, and then it's too late. Too late because of the. Um, the problems with Fukushima at the moment, which is actually contaminating the entire planet, and change has to be done now immediately, um, so that all the resources can get put into uh, cleaning up um, the contamination, as well as um, pollution and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Gas is a fuel which remains vital to the operation of our home services and businesses. In the UK, 80% of our homes rely on gas for heating, while 30% of our electricity comes from gas-fired power stations. In the future, low-carbon generation will reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, but, but we still need flexible power to help manage peaks in demand. It is for these reasons that gas is... Abs uh, I'm sorry, this is absolutely... I, I don't agree. Um, the government, the UK government, is sitting on um, alternative energy sources, first off, uh, generating um, um, water combustion, which is one thing. Uh, it, it, number two um, is the alternative, like solar, wind and all that. And then the number three, um, that is applied into a, um, a zero point, which the government has, um, which is one of the, the, the factors of powering the reverse engineered flying sources which they have and um, which they have and if, uh, the UK have already developed their own triangular shaped uh, um, craft on top of, uh, built from these uh, saucer designs um, which they actually obtained from Germany at the end of World War Two, because um, the Germans were actually um, building these things and it was just absolutely pot luck that uh, the Germans actually lost the war. Um, then, um, as we continue, it says, while demand for gas continues to be high, our ability to source from within our own borders is been steadily declining. In 2004, the U.S. became a net importer of gas for the time since North Sea extraction began. Therefore, believe that the possibility of gas in the U.K. should not. There's there is nanotechnology out there um, uh, where you can actually put a film over windows and things like that, and, um, and what it does is this: it converts it into heat. And um, the thing is. You should be going for this now immediately, not waiting uh, for the the nonsense. Um, this is where, where I firmly feel that there needs to be scientists um, um, doing the politics uh, because absolutely it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. 
and when it's too late, um, it's too late. Uh, the government's infrastructure bill proposes changes to regulations on fracking for shale gas, which is terribly wrong. I, I, I'm really upset about that. Conventional oil and gas extraction mostly involves vertical or near vertical drilling from the location at the surface. A well for shale gas, however, typically runs vertically down and extends horizontal length for a few miles. Under existing legislation, this would mean companies wishing to extract shale gas would have to seek permission from a larger number of landowners. The existing legislation allow, allows coal mining, water, sewage and gas transportation pipelines to have underground access without needing the permission of the land landowner. But the shale gas or deep geothermal, in reality, if the legislation is not amended, it would effectively block fracking activity in deep ge geothermal in the UK. The thing is, uh, I kind of agree with the geothermal thing, but fracking, no, that's poisonous. It's going to kill people, people are going to get sick, and um, you'll end up, you know, when you think about it, because basically, what I don't like about you politicians, you always put finances before uh, people's lives and stuff like that and I totally don't like that and um, uh, when you think like that even when you think like that um, you're going to be spending money in medical problems fixing people's medical issues from the result of this uh, the poisoning of the water at the end of May the government published a consulting on the changes to trespass regulations confirming their intention to legislate the forthcoming infrastructure bill. These changes will mean that while shale gas companies still need the permission of the landowners for the surface access and local planning um, consent, underpinned by the environment, um, environmental impact assets, they will not need permission for underground access below 300 metres. For reasons continued uh, reasons outlined above, I do not uh, oppose these reforms. Well, I do because it's going to poison people. However, uh, and also uh, poison the environment and the, the what uh, what little um, biodiversity this country has. Most of the biodiversity has been exterminated, and um, it's going to kill people, and it's going to kill animals, and it's going to kill plants. And when when the plants and animals are killed, that's the end of the food supply. Then England will just totally have to rely on importing food, and then there's not much food in the sea, uh, unless they start farming seaweed and things like that. Now that is under uh, under threat as well because the um, the underwater currents are slowly bringing the um, the radiation poisoning from Fukushima because that is still spilling crap into the ocean, so it's not giving it time. It doesn't give it time. Whatever radiation had been dumped from Fukushima, it doesn't give. It doesn't dilute. It dilute and then um, oversaturate. It's still spewing radiation, and so you're getting a continuously continuous supply of radiation input inputs, and um, so the sea will be eventually fucked. And the last remaining survival is the, the, the land life. That's going to be fucked as well. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I absolutely don't agree with this fracking nonsense. Um, am I going to actually... I'll actually have to type out a reply and send it to the MP. Um... I'd have to probably do get my, uh, my sources and all that because basically I'm just uh, ref basing my um, thoughts from what I actually read all over the place, and it has to require research to actually collect all these these sources. Um, it's, it's it's like doing a university project actually. Anyway, um, under the umbrella. For the reasons outlined, um, I, I don't know that she doesn't oppose these reforms. Uh, they're absolutely deforms, actually. I would I consider. However, um, only by fully addressing the environmental safety concerns about fracking with this robust regulation, 
and company monetary monitoring and, and strict enforcement won't fix the problem. It's still going to poison the environment because they have to pump the poisonous chemicals into the ground. And even though if it doesn't spill rapidly over time, it's going to seep and it's going to erode and it's going to go into the water supply. Any Tom, Dick, and Harry could actually. Um, know this he, he, uh, fracking is absolute. I, I actually call it planet rape it's absolute planet rape I will therefore continue to push the environmental failure to be strengthened 2012 Labour set out six tough environmental conditions will be placed in large prior to shale gas uh, taking place in the UK while the government accepted four of six conditions in December 2012 we still believe that the regulatory, regulatory framework is not efficiently robust. For example, it is clear that the level of methane in underground water should be assessed prior to drilling. Methane will occur naturally in underground water. So it is important that robust baseline information, information exists to monitor activity against. Furthermore, all monitoring activities should take place on a 12-month period to allow sufficient time. So, well, well, in these within these 12 months, you're going to be poisoning the water supply. Very clever. Very clever. Um, to be strengthened for cleanup costs and liability. Any untold consequences raised fairly and squarely within the industry, not with taxpayers or home owners. Many other concerns remain, must be addressed, particularly in relation to the effectiveness and the monitoring process of the capacity of rele relevant bodies. To, uh, so basically, you know what this sounds like? It sounds like a freaking experiment. An experiment. It sounds like a freaking experiment. Um, and then she says, once again, thank you for taking your time to write. To me, in such an important issue, I am able to assist you further. I'm actually going to reply this, um, and then I'll have to do some research and gather, um, do some data mining across the internet. So that uh, off this video, uh, this the, the big video that I'm doing, um, I'm going to actually um, write a letter. Uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm totally devastated with this fracking because there's not much biodiversity in ecology left in the United Kingdom and this is going to mess it up completely. The children won't have a future here once this has been processed, everything's poisoned. Um, you'll just have to, people probably might have just end up um, importing food supplies and that's just going to cause more problems. And it's actually got, you know, if you want to put money before people, that's going to um, result in more um, costs and liabilities and things like that. Um, the best bet is to, to go, get, get going to the government, bring out that um, reverse engineer technology, what they got from Germany and all that, and then, because, and then make the change off from the old actually ancient fossil fuel industry England can, should be actually be the pioneers of being independent their own independent grid and then the power to the people where people can actually provide their own heat provide their own electricity without being on the grid and all that um, I'm sorry I, it, it, it's just absolutely bonkers anyway um, I'm, you know it's just it, this is extra work and this extra anxiety I'm stressing. Anyway, video, I got a 50 minute limit on YouTube because my account was fair. So, see ya.